day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. The whole purpose, which you just said earlier, the whole purpose uh, of of the of the gospel is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, which is what Christ started off with is the kingdom of God. You know, the, the yeah. gospel itself. That and that's what should always be the central focus of the ministry is to yeah. preach the kingdom of God. And really I'm talking about with the gospel, because that's what he told me. he he sent everybody. You know, I mean some people sit and say, well, you know, they, like Romans, right? They say, how can you, how can you uh, uh, hear without a preacher? And how can you have a preacher unless he be sent? Well, if you look at the Christ, when he said, "I sent," he sent, he sent everybody that received and be, become believers to go preach the gospel. You know, he, he equipped gifts of four, you know, the fivefold ministry gifts. But the whole person fivefold ministry gift is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Which is to get them to understand. Uh huh. You know, Jesus told Peter when he told Peter, "This is the the the, the foundation of the church." Yeah. And he was talking about that he was the Son of God. Uh -huh. that that is what the church stands on. Yeah. If you don't believe that simple thing that Come on Jesus now. Christ yeah. is the Son of God, then everything else is like building a house <laughs> upon a sandy foundation. Right. Exactly. Because nothing will survive this world attack. On, on God. Because he, he is, like you said, because he is the foundation. When I say the world, I'm talking about just the the rulers and the uh, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places, you know, all that stuff. Right. That, it won't survive without that simple thing, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Come on now. Believing that, then you have to believe the gospel. Exactly. You have to, right. the gospel to get that understanding, because if he is the only way to God, come on, come on. Then what else can you be teaching everybody else? Come on now. Exactly. Just be real about it. Yeah. If if Jesus Christ is not taught in every message in some form or fashion then why are you wasting people's time? Because without that understanding, without that foundation just being hammered over and over and over until their, their minds are renewed, that this, because of this man who was God made in the flesh as man, yes. because of that action and what he did, now I have been engrafted. Come on now, come on. To the family of God. Now I have, I have the right to be called a child of God. I have a right to claim Jesus as my brother, my Lord and Savior, my friend. I have a right <clears throat> to expect God to be on my behalf. Yes, if He's my Father because of what Jesus did then why wouldn't he always be taught as an example and as a a doorway into everything else everything else yeah the doorway to god then he has to be the doorway to everything that is taught to us come on and that's what's called stand on message right yeah, yeah which why I, I love the teachings of Paul because that it took that to change this man from being a persecutor. All right. It was like his mission. <laughs> to
to, to stop this teaching. And what makes this so powerful that the one who was no in, in my mind as thorough as Satan in persecuting the church right changed him to go forth and bring all those who were outside come on who were considered less than like like slaves yeah. and, you know three-fourths of a man right or, you know three-fifths or whatever however they put it less right. than considered like dogs uh not, not to be even fellowship with so without him there's no us right. when i'm talking about all because when i the, you, you mean when the, I, the, by him explaining the foundation yeah. of christ without without god using him you go reach the gentiles you go reach the gentiles right. then there is no us right now i'm not putting no pedestal on paul because it took god to operate through paul and yes. paul did not rely on paul and and, and and don't forget now and, and i agree and even put the balance in that is that he did tell peter first right remember he told peter to go to cornelia's house and and he stopped preaching first first that those sheep through the animals came down on the sheep and then yeah. and he so him and and a couple of his jewish people went to cornelia's house stopped preaching the gospel because he felt god had told him to do that and then yeah. they were astonished to that see thing. the Holy Spirit fall on the Gentiles. Yeah. And then, like you're saying, is that uh, David had the council in, uh, in the book of Acts, where they, I think it's chapter 15 or something, where some of the Jews was telling uh, Paul and Barnabas went back to Jerusalem to say that the, the, the Jews that they were preaching to with the Gentiles were telling the Gentiles that they have to go do the law, yeah, go back to the law. Yeah. and they 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 said, well, you know, why would we want to put the burden on them that we couldn't even bear? Yeah. So, like you said, is that God so said, let me take let me take a staunch Jewish person uh, to go out and 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 minister the gospel, you know, uh, to the Gentiles. And when you look at it, it anyone would have had gentiles going in accordance with the law tradition it would have been you know yeah. according to the law this is what you need that would have been paul yeah yeah but the influence that christ had on him with his encounter mm -hmm. was so so life-changing this dude went out and search the scriptures to find out what in the world is going on. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did, and, and 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 he had that compassion, and at the same time, that logic behind the uh, not being legalistic, but yet, if you notice that doctrine, doctrine, they they became there's been more of a push of being legalistic, you know. Yeah. Uh, and he was trying to say, no, that's not that's. That's not what you need to do. Now I know he was trying to. I, I was part when you look at Bowser and Rose video. He was talking about the fact is that he was he spent most of his time trying to help the Gentiles understand. Hey, there's some behavior that you need to start working on. Uh, Corinthian. I didn't know that he gave a background on Corinthians where a lot of cases. They, that was a that was a place of where sexual immorality was, you know, okay. and, and he was trying to help them. Hey, look, you know, uh, y'all can't y'all need to do this dress a little bit modern. You know, it was like a lot of temples, temple whores places, right? Prostitutes, mm -hmm. and you know, people come as they are. They they gonna they gonna do the things that they mm -hmm. always been doing. So when he was telling them to be more modest apparel, right? Uh, he was basically saying, "Look, you don't 
coming into the body of Christ, you don't need to advertise yourself. I think that's when you talk about modest apparel, those females were wearing things that was what get you. It's like a, it's like a what a, 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 a billboard, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's hey, yeah, yeah, come over here because uh, this, this is what I do, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, so he was really spending a lot of time trying to to help Gentiles uh, move away from that, you know, that pagan type of living. Oh yeah. No. Uh, and so, so that's what Miles Monroe was talking about. I said to a point, he was focusing on structure, building a structure uh, for the for the ministry. And oh, yeah. that's where you see a lot of people that what Moreau was talking about. Take a look at it; it's real good. I thought it was good. Uh, yeah. He said yeah. he he spent a lot of time trying to address those issues. Opposed to what he's talking about is that Christ spent most of his time talking about the kingdom itself, the kingdom of God. Yeah, and 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 he was ministering to those that were pretty much never ministered. Never been ministered before, exactly. So <laughs> I have to understand. You have, you have people in society that were a part of the children of God yeah. <clears throat> and but were they were inside but out inside but out and then you had people who were keeping them down yes yeah for, for their personal purpose mm -hmm. you know and, and and that is a lot of the teachings of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, situation he put them in their place in their face. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you you look at these scripts. I mean, I've I've been noticing it more and more. I mean, he did not pull any punches when it came to those religious leaders in that time. Exactly. He was, he was really showing how far they were from being righteous in the eyes of God. He did. And how, and yep. how, how far they were from the love that God wanted them to have for his people. Come on now. And the compassion that he wanted them to have for their people. But they, hey, those leaders, well, basically, you can look at the religious leaders now yeah. and see how they were then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the best places, the best clothes, the best home, the you know, the, the best seats, you know, they they put all these requirements on the children of Israel that they wouldn't even do. They wouldn't even do. And, you know, you know what, what it came to me to say is that Christ was doing what Paul was doing to the Gentiles, what Christ was doing to the Jews. You know what yeah. I mean? Because he was trying to say, "Yeah, y'all need to get, y'all need to restructure. Y'all, y'all not, y'all missing the, the concept here. Y'all, y'all, your heart ain't in it. You, 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 you know what I mean? You're losing the, the spiritual intent because yeah. you're too busy meditating on the law." Hey, Jimmy, how you doing, sir? Good morning. How you all doing? Good morning. Good morning. Sir. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year, Happy, sir. Happy New Year's to you all as well. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're glad you're back. We're sitting there talking about the, uh, I sent out, I, I told him about the, uh, uh, I sent out a video of Miles Moreau yesterday, and I thought it was a very interesting point, and that's what we've just been talking about, uh, about the, the contrast between uh, Paul helping the Gentiles understand the structures of, of the kingdom of God and in and, and, and lifestyle. And then Jesus, and that's why we just finished talking about the second it was that Jesus was doing the same thing, helping the Jewish people. <laughs> uh, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all missing the boat here. Y'all missing the whole concept of what God is trying to do. You know, y'all become too legalistic. And 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 I need y'all to refocus. Uh, and understand what the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of heaven is like. 
Remember, that's what he always taught. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, so y'all need to repent, change your mind, change your direction. So that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, today. Uh, but Brother Asher, we'll go ahead and pray first. And then, then uh, I will use the slides that I got up for discussion points. But uh, you want prayers in? Sure. So, Father, we, we truly thank you for another day. Yes, Lord. Uh, the, the day is uh, part of a, what, what we like to call a new beginning, a new year. <laughs> we, we truly thank you for that. We thank you that we are here. Yes. And, uh, here to be perfected through you by means of your Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, we have an expectation that the Holy Spirit shall reveal Revealed. to about your will yes Lord. about your words to us yes Lord, we submit ourselves wholeheartedly father we ask that this information be given uh, with all simplicity so that on. we can hey. have an understanding lord god and that we can apply to our lives yeah. and bear fruit therein yeah. father we pray for all those who are listening come on that, now that it applies to them as well. Yes. And we truly thank you for being in the midst of us during this time. Yes. And we truly give place to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And what, what here gonna start off with showing the, the, the title uh, that I'm using today. Uh, is for the help out for our discussion. Uh, you see, I was, I was saying a good theme of going into the kingdom of God or going to 2022 is is when we're talking about bearing the fruits of the spirit one of the biggest ones that you know I always talk about is long suffering right and and, and long suffering means patience and a lot of cases when we always talked about you know as somebody said you ask for patience from god uh you you go, you're gonna get some issues right <laughs> you're gonna get some issues but i never thought about the fact that the patience is also talking about toward other people not just getting learn to have patience for yourself right but have patience toward other people so so the topic i got here is long suffering or patience those are two definitions but not intolerance and i, I think even when the jewish people uh came up they there was a based on being legalistic there was a lot of intolerance that they had especially toward you know tax collectors uh, you know, people they call sinners. Uh, even Jesus, they, they was like, you know, I, I'm not receiving him, right? I, I, I'm not going to recognize him because I, I just don't have the patience for him. I don't have the tolerance for him. Uh, and, and so let's look at some of the examples. And to start off with, what I want to show you is what God says or who he is. Because we, we're Christians, but be Christ like, right? And Christ always say he does what the Father says. So I start off here, Brother Addison, on the scriptures uh, dealing with God being uh, long-suffering. The, the first one, you can read that for us, is, is, is what, this is when God revealed himself to Moses. And okay. he did, did, look what he did in uh, Exodus 34, 6. What did he say? Lord passed by before him and proclaim the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. So he, you know, he was proclaiming that to Moses, right? He, mm -hmm. he said, I'm going to let you see my backside. And as I let you see me, I am going to let you relate to where I'm coming from, right? He's proclaiming that's what I am. Uh, and that's what Christ was, when you think about it, Christ said, I never do anything except for my father. This, this is one example. Next one. What was the next one say? <laughs> the Lord is long suffering. Yes. Mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilt. Come on, I like that. The iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Amen. I like the fact that you saw that he is forgiving, he is merciful, right? Uh, if for transgression so but he said look at it, i'm not clearing <laughs> i'm not endorsing 
uh, you know, transgression. I am forgiving. I am merciful. But but don't 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 think I won't you won't get the <laughs> you won't get the wrath behind those type of things that that you do when you step far you know out of line. That makes sense. Yeah, he's saying this, and I think that's what some people miss out miss sometimes is the fact is no, not endorsing bad behavior, but being merciful and 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 and, and forgiving for those who whether to turn around. He's 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 always quick to do that. I think that was what was, what was that scripture where uh, what was that one where where it was it was uh, Jonah. Remember Jonah going to Nineveh. He and he was he didn't want to go, and and and, and, I, and I thought about when he said it. He didn't want to go because he said I knew, <laughs> I knew that if those people repent, you 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 gonna let them go. <laughs> Because he came, he came there to, to, to prophesize that you guys are going down. God is through with you. <laughs> you. You know what I mean? Your level of transgression has reached a point that the wrath of God is coming on this great city. And what they do? They 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 took heed to what <laughs> they took. Yeah. They took heed to it. You're the leader, and it all of getting in sackcloth and saying, "Lord, <laughs> Whoa, we we." And I'm, that's interesting because apparently God was already dealing with them. It had to be right. The, the, the prophet is really just confirming something that God has already been revealing to those people in the first place. Yeah, but he had to show up. <laughs> <laughs> you talk which one? You talking about uh, Jonah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. He did have to come and, and let them hear what God says. And I used to think at first he was, you know, when you always heard about it, he was more fearful going. <laughs> but in reality, he, he got on that mountain and he wanted to see that fire brimstone <laughs> come down on that city. And but it, then when you heard what he said is, Lord, I knew you were going to do it to him. I just, I just, <laughs> He, in other words, God showed his mercy yeah. and forgiven those people. And therefore, but Jonah did not want to do that. You know, and, and God is saying, guys, I want you to be merciful and, and uh, forgiving. If the people are willing to change, you know, that let you, but that's, that's for his job to do. Psalms 18, uh, Psalm 86, 15 said, but thou art God, for thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion. And if you remember in the gospel, Jesus was moved with compassion or because of compassion, right? He's gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. This is God. We're talking about God himself uh, being, being who he is. He proclaimed that he's merciful. He claims he's long-suffering and he put uh, abundance of goodness and truth. And then, as you see right there, John 14, 6, which you quoted earlier today, right? Remember that? He said, he said Jesus said unto him, I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but my, by me. You got to go my way. And who is his way? God's way. I just want you to, that's the whole point. He said, I do nothing except for what the Father showed me, right? I don't... I don't do this. This is my pattern of behavior, is what the father, what I've seen the father do. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, with that in mind, I put down here an example of suffering. Jesus Jesus showing his patience toward his disciples, or toward his, those, yeah, his disciples toward doing the work of the ministry. Read, read that for us. Eddie. This is Jesus heals a boy with a demon. Okay. In Matthew 17, 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is, he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. 
and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? Uh -huh. How long shall I suffer you? Uh -huh. Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And, and what I was catching more the fact of how Jesus responded to the guy, right? <laughs> The, the guy said, your disciples could not cure him. And, and then G, look at Jesus' response toward that. First of all, he said is, I, I'm, I'm still suffering long, right? I, I, I just don't know how long I got to do it. <laughs> I'm going to be patient with you guys. But he called them, oh, faithless. He called them perverse generation. Now, I don't know if he's calling the disciple. Who, who do you think he's talking to? He said generation. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously everyone <laughs> in that generation to include the disciples. <laughs> in that sentence. <laughs> so, I mean, that that is so he's talking to the disciples too then. They all in that generation. Right. Everybody. Everybody. I, I believe everybody. Well, I assume he was. He obviously he, he so first of all, I guess on the point of the guy that because I was this is also in another uh book, one of the books, right? And remember that one he said, Help my unbelief? Remember that that, that, that other scripture, other uh, other book where it says, Lord, I believe, but have my unbelief. So, so I guess when he yeah, so I guess that is applying to all of them there. Cause I got the next, you know, the next part of the verse up there. I just wanted to capture that first piece there. Is that he's responding, and he's showing. He's also showing you he is showing patience with these people, right? Long yeah. suffering. I mean, no different than a parent with a child. Uh huh. <laughs> right. The child thing and. To the point to where you broke it down so much, you just know that they got it. <laughs> exactly. And when they they don't have it, you know, you're looking at them. What, what is wrong with you, boy or girl? You know, I, I you're supposed to have this. Yes, you went over this in detail. <laughs> you know, numerous times, and yet you still don't get it. You don't get it. <laughs> And, and so then what do you do?